we will get started. Okay, recording is on. Good morning, welcome. Trust all of you are doing good and you're having a good week. All right, good. Sorry, could somebody just pray with us and we will get started. Um, Kanan, is your mic okay? Can you pray? Okay, maybe um, Kanan's mic may not be okay. Dave, would you be able to pray with us and we'll start? Sure, Father, we thank you, Lord, God, for this day once again, Lord Jesus, as we come to learn, Lord Jesus, I pray that your spirit be with us, Lord Jesus, as our pastor teaches everything, Lord Jesus, help us to understand, help us to use it in our ministry for your glory, Lord Jesus, amen, Lord Jesus, I pray, amen. 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 All right. So media and technology and ministry, um, we were talking, we started by talking about digital engagement. That is, how do we engage people digitally using media, media using technology? Uh, we can serve people, we can engage people, uh, we can uh, minister to them. And uh, we started last week talking about websites and just sharing some practical ideas and thoughts um, that we can keep in mind as we um, you know get websites built for our churches and ministries some practical things to keep in mind i'll just quickly review and i'll finish you know uh, some uh, part of what i was talking about towards the end of the class last week i want to finish that up today and with that we will close and then we will get into the next topic tomorrow um, so let me go ahead and just share the same PDF that we were looking at last week, All right? So just a quickly review. We said websites are a very important tool these days uh, uh, to engage with people. Everybody expects, you know, a church or a ministry to have a website where they go in for, they go for, information about the church about the meetings uh, and maybe even get some resources about the church and so you know uh, uh, some ideas on how to build a useful website uh, you know you select your website platform we encourage you know use of what is called as a content management system uh, one of the leading ones is joomla it's open source it's free uh, you could use that and then you select a domain name for your website try to find something that's short and easy that people remember they would be able to associate with your with your uh, church or your ministry uh, so, uh, we, we spoke about that and you can search whether it's available and then you register your domain name with a hosting provider right so we try to explain a little bit about what happens when you register your domain name uh, your whole, uh, your, uh, it will be uh, if you register directly with the hosting provider, uh, the 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 domain name will be registered with the international registrar, and from there they will point to uh, the server where your website is going to be hosted, so that when people search online on the internet, they'll be able to find your website. So uh, that's you know, that's how generally it works, and you know you could register uh, with different hosting providers. You may have hosting providers in your own country, or you can use international. Now, uh, we use a hosting our hosting providers. One uh, that we use, Hostica, is actually based in the U.S. So our uh, our website is actually hosted in the U.S. Then we also, for other things like our e-learning portal and all uh, and uh, other things, we use uh, Amazon Web Services. Uh, so again, it's US-based. Now, of course, some of them may have uh, you know redundant servers in other parts of the world, but technically, the, the, the main server will be in the US. Now, 
some things to keep in mind, which I will say later on is uh, uh, where your website is hosted, like which country, which geographical location uh, will determine whether it's easily visible there. So there, there are some, the ways, the way the search engines work in some ways are also connected to where your website is hosted. So your, the visibility of your website is determined by that as well. So uh, I will mention that a little later, right? So the next thing is to build your website uh, uh, and you can decide, you know, how, how do you want it depending on whom you're trying to reach uh, and um, what are the objectives you want to uh, achieve through your website, whether it's content or, you know, whatever uh, you want to get people to respond to certain things, uh, typical pages that would be there in, in websites and, uh, some useful thoughts here we shared on, um, uh, on, 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 on websites and so on. And then, uh, so having said, uh, you know, shared this, uh, I just explained that, you know, for us uh, uh, at apcw.org, our church website, we wanted it to be like a resource center. So uh, we, we are trying to build it into a resource center where People will come to this place because there are sermons, there are free books, uh, and there are sermon series, uh, all those kinds of things. So it will draw people there. So it's not only serving our immediate church community, uh, but it's also going to uh, be like a resource center for believers anywhere in the world. They can come. And so we intentionally have designed it like that. And also we uh, are providing all our resources for free. So, uh, you know, we're not charging for any of the sermons or the books or anything like that. Just make it free. Just people can come and use it and be benefited. So that's our motive or our motivation. That's how we are trying to position our church website. Now, what we were talking about last uh, week towards the end of the class is, of course, you can, you know, link your website with all your uh, social media accounts so people know that you know this is your Facebook page or YouTube channel or your Instagram Twitter whatever you know whatever you're using people will know that uh, but this is what we were talking about we were saying look uh, you know we need to when you create a website creating a website is one thing you know okay you have your website you have your graphics and your content you put all together but you need to be searchable online that means uh, when people search, they should be able to find your website. Okay, so that's uh, that's uh, that's important, and um, um, uh, so part of doing that is search. What is referred to as search engine optimization. That means uh, there are certain things that you do in your website and certain ways that you build your website, so that search engines will be able to take them or find them. Okay, and I just want to share some things, uh, some simple ideas with you uh, so that when you build your website, it's a good thing to have a website, but also think about these things um, uh, uh, because the content, many, many times that you will be providing the content, you know, you are the one who knows your ministry or your organization, you would be providing the content. So when you are putting up content on your website, on the various pages, you need to be thinking about some of these things, okay? Uh, the developer, the IT people, or the media team may not be thinking about these things because they are busy, you know, they, they want to build the website and they want to do all the graphics and they want to do the, that work. They may or may not be thinking about this. So you need to be thinking about this. And also, you know, there are people who are specialists in uh, search engine optimization. That means they specialize in uh, improving the visibility of your website. So if you have such kind of people who can help you, that's wonderful. Otherwise, there are some simple things you can do, right? So one, uh, and I'm just gonna talk about some of them, okay? One of the simple things that we can do to make our website visible, okay? Uh, let me just back up a little bit and share a little bit about how you know how how does search how do search engines work so google is the big search engine that you know 
the world's biggest search engine uh, that many, many people use. So nowadays we just say Google it, you know. Now, how does Google a search engine work? Uh, now, just in a nutshell, right? So one, the place where the person is searching from is important, right? Because uh, Google shows its results, firstly, in relation to the location of the person. So you're not always get your res the results that you see when you do a search are not always global. No, the results you see are, it's, it's, it's a blended thing. First and foremost, it is specific to where you are searching from. So if you are in the city of Bangalore and you do a search, uh, Google is going to first of all look up for things in your city or in your geolocation, wherever you are searching from. So if you're searching for, uh, you know, uh, a spirit, like we did last time, example, a spirit-filled church, it's going to show you spiritual churches, first of all, in your location. Okay, you're in Bangalore, so okay. You know. And then after that, it will it will expand it into churches that are, you know, spiritual church that are from other locations that are ranked very highly. And there are certain reasons why those churches are ranked very highly. But first it's showing you results that are specific to your location and then makes it, it goes global by ranking. Okay, so that's how the search results that people see uh, are influenced. So, so if you have a website that is hosted, so this is where, where you host your website comes into play. If you host your website in the US, you know, so it will it will be picked up there also, and and although your your church is in Bangalore and you're giving your address in Bangalore and all of that, both those things are are there. But if you want your website to appear in another part of the world, you some of the things is you may have to have an address in that part of the world, or you may have to have a domain name that's specific to their region, like, uh, you know. For if you're if you want it to show up in France, you may have to have a domain name that is .fr with that you know country's uh, geolocation .fr or .uk or whatever whichever part of the world you want it to show. Um, so, so your website, if you you are a church in Bangalore, um, and your website is hosted in the US, it will show up here, but it won't show up in UK or France or you know, some other part of the Netherlands or, you know, some other part of the world, because there's no relation with your church that's in Bangalore, website hosted in the US, no relation to France or UK or other countries. Unless your website has a high ranking globally, or you have a region specific domain name like .uk or .france or .netherlands and so on. Okay, so those things come into play. Uh, so, if, you know, so we're not getting into those things. Uh, you know, we'll just talk about, okay, if you want your website to show up in your region, technically people in your country or in your city or your country are searching and you want to appear there, what are some of the things you have to keep in mind? First of all, keywords. That means there have to be words in the content in your website that match the words and the phrases that people use to search. So, you know, you suppose you create a website for your church, say Hope City Church. And Hope City is based in Bangalore. But for some reason, uh, and now let's say Hope City is a spiritual church. Uh, it's based in Bangalore. Uh, so in the content, in the text that is used in the, in the the website it's important to use those keywords like spirit filled church you know um, church in bangalore those it's important to use those those words in the text in your website so that it gets picked up so google has what it's called as web crawlers that means these are uh, um, 
uh, scripts that are running in the background that, that they'll read through all the pages of all the websites. That's really huge amounts of data that are being crawled every day, right? So it is reading through, and these are uh, engines, so it's not humans, but it's all software. They're reading through all the content that's on your pages, okay? And they're looking for words that are being used often. So in your content, oh, it's Bangalore is there, Spirit Phil is there, uh, church is there, you know, or oh, it's a fellowship, uh, family church. So, you know, those things have, and it's reading through that and it, then it's indexing it. It's putting it in some sort of a, uh, 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 you know, cataloging or an indexing system so that when people search, you know, the websites that, ma that have a lot of the content related to those keywords get higher rank. Not not exam, but there are other issues, other connect, other parameters as well. But one very important thing is those keywords must be in the content of your website, All right? So if you are running a children's home, state that you know children's home, children ages so and so, or you know of what kind of children. Now, how are you going to help them? The phrases and the keywords that people use to search must be used in the content of your website, right? And these keywords are also put into the, what are known as the meta titles or they use in the URLs, that's important, okay? So the person who's doing your website, you can tell them, hey, make sure you put these keywords in the title of my web page, in the URL of my web page, and they use these keywords, because that'll make your website more visible. Another. Uh, thing that increases your visibility is when you list your organization on Google Business. Uh, so you simply have to go to googlebusiness.com and you list your website there uh, and then put in information, a lot of information related to what your organization does, right? So when people search, Google usually shows up first, you know, the, 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 the directory of businesses, it'll show usually in relation to that search phrase. And so if your business is listed in Google Business and it matches those phrases or search keywords, then your business is going to show up in the result right? uh, for, in the business listing. So that is very, very useful. So you know your, your organization will be uh, displayed and people will find you easily. Another thing that that uh, influences the search results is how many links are there to your page from other places. So they call it citations or cross-linking, right? So here's your website, but are there other websites also referencing or providing a link to your website, and um, are they providing you know your the name, the address? Are they referencing your website? The more such references are there, the higher your website is going to be ranked. It increases the ranking of your website in the search engines. Okay, so uh, some of this you can do intentionally, right? So you have a website, and if you have uh, other other online uh, places, like example, it could be your social media, your Facebook page, your Instagram page, um, it could be other places. Uh, you may use some free uh, portals that are available where you can write content. And from there, you intentionally link to, you link to your website. Right, so sometimes there are a lot of um, yellow pages and other directories where you can list businesses. So you intentionally list your business on these other places and you provide a link back to your church website. So eventually what happens, the ranking, because of these citations or these cross links, the ranking of your website goes up. It becomes more visible in uh, the searches that are take place in the search engines. 
okay so some of the places that you can uh, list uh, your website of course um, uh, Google business then you can use you know Facebook and Bing and Apple and uh, several other places and there are there, there are many more where you can uh, uh, list your website but remember uh, do this intentionally because if you have more references more links to your website from every other you know as many places you can your ranking will go up okay now in order for Google to actually crawl through your website uh, there is a place uh, and I can't show it to you now because uh, I'm logged in as a different account but uh, if you go to search console Google search uh, console so you go to search.google.com slash search hyphen console um, uh, and, 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 and you log in there so you go in there and you can submit your domain name you can give your domain name for um, sub, um, for Google to index your website to crawl through your website and to index the pages of your website so you should make sure that whoever is managing your uh, website does this right now I can't log in there because I'm logged into the APC Bible College uh, on Google meet uh, but otherwise I would have logged in to using uh, all people search Gmail account uh, I would log into search.google.com search console and I can show you how we have submitted all our different websites we have about six or seven different websites that we are maintaining and uh, we submit all our web we have submitted all our website to the search console Google search console so that they will it will in turn crawl through of our websites and index all the pages and it gives you very good reports you know it shows you um, um, you know if there are problems with your web page uh, uh, how many links are coming in to your page you know how many times it's been referenced from other pages which are the places where it's most highly uh, linked in it gives a lot of information so you can really see how your website is doing and look at ways to improve it right so um, you can have somebody do that for you so uh, optimizing a website make sure you use keywords so if you go to all people's church website you will see you know we talk about being a spirit-filled church we talk about you know different words like you know, youth ministry or children's ministry whatever people are going to be searching some people search for a church um, that has a good family ministry or a good community or you know, so all those words, keywords are being used intentionally in the content of our website uh, because when people search, they need to be able to find us. And so, of course, uh, we have been list, we list ourselves there in Google Business Listing. Uh, we keep building these cross links, references back uh, to our website uh, and, and uh, we are listed on these various places that uh, we can get references back right so other things that um, that you would uh, want to keep in mind uh, to improve the visibility of your website is you must keep the website content updated right so um, what happens is over time if you don't update the pages are going to you know just then their the, the indexing, the ranking is going to drop. If you don't keep your content updated, uh, uh, slowly the website ranking will begin to drop. So the important thing is to keep content fresh, keep it updated, and keep it growing. So that that's that requires you know uh, a bit of work. So you have dedicated people, or you have people who can help you with that to keep the content fresh, keep it updated, and uh, that will improve or make sure that you don't at least lose your ranking or your visibility uh, through the search engines okay so uh, just to give you some examples uh, right now our APC Bible College website it's a simple HTML web, uh, website uh, it's being changed actually it's it's going to be it's actually we have a 
in, in, in the back end, it's being moved to a content management system. But initially, we wanted to build something very quick. Um, uh, so we built something with just plain HTML. Um, uh, our apcw.org website is built on Joomla, which is a content management system. And uh, APC Music, uh, uh, it's, um, it's right now just a simple website, simple HTML website. It's not on uh, a content management system. So uh, we, we have different websites built on different things, but eventually all our websites are going to be move, moved to uh, this content management system. All right. So last week, I was, um, I was just sharing with you, you know, I was just showing you how when we do searches, uh, you know, like we said, spirit filled churches in Bangalore. Yeah, we did that last week. So, you know, how when, you know, you, when spirit filled churches, bang, somebody searches, so you can imagine, uh, somebody who comes to Bangalore, uh, if they are looking for a spiritual church, they would search. You know, where, what are the spiritual churches in Bangalore? Uh, now, you're looking at the search results. This section is basically Google's business listing. Right? So this is here, Google's business listing. So the, the reason we are shown up here is because we've been listed in Google's business and the map. So it's showing the map and so on. Right? And then, of course, these are the actual search results, right? Now, why did it pick up all people's church? You will see that in, in the description of all people's church, the word spirit filled is used. All people's church in Bangalore is a spirit filled church. So we intentionally use that word spirit filled. Right? And we also used it in the title of that page, All People's Church in Bangalore, Spirit Filled. Right? So when you use those words intentionally in your website, um, the chances of those pages or that website getting picked up is higher. Right? So when somebody searched Spirit Filled Churches Bangalore, the reason this website, APC, got picked up is because they used that word Spirit Filled. Right? So using those words intentionally are important. Now, you see, we also use the word word-based, word-based, so intentionally, because sometimes people may search, you know, they want a word-based church in Bangalore, so they will search word-based church, word churches in Bangalore. Right? So here you see, uh, there are some other churches that have been listed uh, based on the comments, but in the search results, again, APC is listed high or number one because we use that those words intentionally, word-based, word-based, right? So just how you want to position your church, uh, you use those keywords, right? Now, since the time of the lockdown, uh, 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 online church it became very, uh, you know, very big, and so people were looking for online churches. Now, so when you search for online church, the first in this church in the search result is Life Church. Now, why is Life Church here? Because Life Church is very highly ranked globally. Right. I think they have the largest online church presence in the world. I think that's what it is. So they're ranked very highly. So Life Church is listed number one in the search result for online church. But, you know, you see, just go down a little bit. And of course, you have the videos of online church services. And then first in the local side is All People's Church. Now, why is All People's Church picked up? Because we have intentionally used the word online Sunday church service, online church, online church in the text of our web page. Right? So because we've used those words, online church service, online church, 
this website has been picked up and it's you know showing up on page one and then you have other international like Hillsong and Church of England. So these are global sites, they're ranked highly uh, globally, right? So, but it's interesting that, you know, this would come here because we um, a, intentionally use those words online church, right? So, uh, I'm just showing you, you know, how intentionally you use certain things and um, it will cause your website to be ranked highly along with the other criteria, other things that I had mentioned, okay? Uh, and why is this important? Because ultimately when people are looking for something, they go and search online. And if you are, uh, uh, you, you know, and you want your website to be there. You know, so um, if somebody searches for free Christian books, right? So we look for free Christian books. We are ranked here, number one. Now this is local, right? I mean, uh, it's is bring it. It's this this not global. So if somebody from Australia is searching free Christian books, or they may find other links. Uh, but in our in this geolocation context, when somebody searches for free, free Christian books, they get to our ours is listed here first, so that they can then go to uh, our, our page and make use of the Christian books. And notice we have used intentionally free Christian books, free Christian books in the text of our page heading and the text of our page, so it gets listed. And then there are of course other other uh, uh, websites that are available as well. Okay. Uh, now I don't want to brag so much about APC. I'm just uh, showing you, uh, you know, how we have worked through this. Um, uh, any questions so far? Are you all with me? You're understanding it? We are good. Okay, now, uh, okay, yeah, Aaron. Uh, others are understanding? Uh, Siddharth, Thomas, you're following me, is it? Okay. Okay, all right. <coughs> so, Kanan said, Kanan said uh, free books and he found APC website, okay. So, um, so Kanan is in Tamil Nadu, so even there, um, he's able to, you know, see. Uh, so I think in this geolocation, uh, with the, maybe India and around, you know, APC website will have a good ranking, but it may not be the same, uh, you know, in other parts of the world because it will pick up those, you know, websites. Now there is a way by which we can see uh, other parts of the world. Okay, this is a little side journey, but I want you to understand from a search perspective. So, okay, I'll just show this to you, then we'll close. Uh, so, so basically you understood, right? Uh, when you build a website, use keywords in the content of your website. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, so can, okay. Um, thanks, Kanan. I see Kanan saying on the first page, rank number two. He finds it in Tamil Nadu. So maybe there's something else that's ranked one uh, over there. Okay. Um, yeah. So what I was saying is to summarize, you know, you're creating a website, but you also want your website to be visible to search engines. And simple tips, right? One is to use content in your website that people will search. Now, we have a team of people, this again, who are building content for a mental health, a Christian mental health portal. So Christless Life, which is our counseling website, it's going to be changed into a mental health portal. So they are writing content and they're intentionally using, you know, um, they're building content for, on mental health related topics. You know, simple like things like anxiety or anger, things like that. So we're building content. So when, so once we release it, uh, when people search, it, it, hopefully we will be ranked high so that they will find content that will help them.
but it'll be Christian based. So there will be a chance for them to be exposed to, and uh, maybe there are people who are looking for Christian based help with mental health problems, right? And they will find our website resources useful. So again, that content is being built with that uh, intentionally to use those keywords by which people will be searching and it'll help provide the content for them. So that's one thing, use keywords. Second is uh, list it in Google business. It is, very, it is free, very simple to do. Uh, go to business, go, uh, google.com slash business and list your church there. You know, put, put it as a church, give it a, give a link to your website and then use other keywords like, you know, spirit filled or assembly of God or Baptist or Methodist, whatever the denomination, whatever you, you, you know, you want your church to be visible by. Because sometimes people will search, you know, Baptist church in Bangalore or people will search uh, Methodist church in Bangalore or Pentecostal church in Bangalore, you know. People search by those terms because they're looking for that kind of a church. If you use that word in your website, then you are likely to be uh, visible. Okay. So, and listed in Google listing. Thirdly, we said link to your website from other places. So through your social media accounts, link back to your website gives you more visibility. Okay, so these are some simple things you can do. Uh, and of course, if you um, get somebody who knows search engine optimization, they will give you a lot more ideas. I don't want to get into too much technical things, but things that you as a pastor or as a leader should be informed about so that you know you can make sure that what you do is visible. Okay, now just a little side thing. If you want to know whether, you know, there is something called google.com advanced search. Okay, let me share that with you. Uh, I didn't start the sharing of my screen. I'll just share this quickly before we close. Okay, so there's something called google.com advanced search. Okay, that means you can search how, you know, what, what, what is seen by somebody in a different part of the world in a different language. So, you know, you can search for a phrase, but you want to say, okay, in, you know, Afghanistan or Albania, any other country, you know, okay, so example, you know, uh, uh, let's say, how, how will this phrase look? if somebody is searching in the United States. Okay, uh, language, of course, this is gonna be in English. I don't have to do it, there, but let's say language, All right? So suppose somebody in the United States searching in English uh, and they search, okay, will they be able to see all people's church example? So I just, just to see this, let me see all people's search. Okay, all people's search is visible okay. in the United States. Now, why is it visible? Because, and of course it's giving us, giving the information here and all the YouTube channels. Uh, the reason is because it's hosted, this, this, this thing is hosted in the US. But if you want to say, okay, what about you know, uh, will it be visible in some other country? Uh, uh, let me say, suppose somebody's searching in English, but they are searching in, uh, you know, let me just pick up <laughs> Albania. Will they see all people's search? Most likely they won't. Yeah. They are seeing uh, locally, Ah, okay, so it's showing the um, the the results of the videos here, but you see all, all people search website is not visible here. Okay, so, I, so you see Albania, all these are Albanian sites. 
they, you don't see all people search. Now this section, I think it's being listed here. This, this is the Google business listing, okay? So this is picked up based on my, where I'm searching from, but the actual results here, uh, Albania results, you don't see all people's church, except for somebody has shared a, a link uh, on their Facebook page. That's why this is showing up. But otherwise, you don't see all people's church. Okay, but this is one way to do, uh, to find out if your website is being visible in other languages and regions. And there's another way, a more, uh, you can actually uh, shift your location to another part of the world, uh, you know, and uh, you can search as though somebody in, in that country is searching. Uh, I, I don't want to get into it, but you can actually do it and search. But that's just for interest. Okay, so I'll pause here. Uh, I hope I didn't uh, overload you with technical information. Uh, the basic thing I wanted to get across was in addition to building a good website, make sure it's searchable. Uh, and there are some simple things you can keep in mind uh, and you can do because you will be providing the content for your website. Make sure you intentionally use phrases and words that make your website visible. Okay, so that's kind of the main message I want to get across here. Now, what we will do get into tomorrow is other other um, areas of digital engagement, uh, which you may be uh, a little bit more familiar, things like email and uh, so on. Uh, I'll just quickly run through it. Uh, nowadays, uh, especially in India, WhatsApp has become a very uh, uh, common, you know, plat so, uh, digital engagement platform. Now, uh, I'll just share with you what we do using WhatsApp, where you can actually set up an account uh, uh, with Facebook or with Meta, and you can do broadcasting through WhatsApp. So I'll just share those things with you so you can make use of those, you know, the email, the WhatsApp messaging, uh, to engage with people, people, keep people connected to your church and ministry. Okay, so we'll cover those kinds of things tomorrow. Uh, and those will be a little bit more familiar uh, to all of us. Okay, uh, we have five minutes. Any questions, any things you would like to clarify? I don't see any questions in the chat, so we will close. Uh, but think about it. You're welcome to ask questions anytime, okay? Uh, if you're working on a website and you need some guidance, uh, um, you know, you're welcome to ask, okay? I see Aaron's comment. Okay, it's clear, trying your best to understand, okay? And, and you know, uh, keep these thoughts in mind. Uh, you know, sooner or later, you'll have to build something for your organization, for your church and you can share these ideas with them as they work on their content, okay? All right, let's wrap up. Can somebody close in prayer? And uh, we will connect back tomorrow and uh, take this forward. Okay. Prince, would you close and dismiss us in prayer, please? Or maybe Prince connection is not okay. Anyone else? Siddharth, Aaron, just pray with us and dismiss. I'll pray about them. Well, thank you for your guidance in understanding throughout uh, the class. And Lord, whatever we have learned so far and, and whatever we're going to learn, Lord Father, Help us all to be a good influencer in this digital world so that Lord Father do so that we can reach out many for your kingdom. So Lord, um please everyone 
and I submit the rest of the day into your loving hand. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you, everyone, uh, for being on the class today. We'll continue this tomorrow. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Bye now. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor.